Thanks for joining us for this episode. And I do want to remind you to make sure that you are following us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you may listen to podcasts. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at church advance. And you can actually watch video versions of each episode. We'd also really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star review and share this content with other pastors and church leaders. We want to help as many of these folks as we can. And so we'd really appreciate you sharing this episode with your friends. Well, thanks again for joining us as we begin today's episode and continue to advance a reformation of fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches. This is Church Advance with Brian Sams. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Church Advance podcast with Brian Sams. And uh, what a great season we are in. It's January. May notice I've got a jacket on, believe it or not, right here in sunny, beautiful Florida. Uh, it is 34 degrees today. One of the coldest days that we've had. It's expected to be colder as I'm recording it this coming Sunday, which is hard to believe. But uh, anyways, I know many of you, even even our uh, co-host Luke, he's he's in a much worse situation than we are. I think what did you say five degrees or negative five? It, it hit negative one this uh, early this morning, and oh, uh, right now we're at oh we we're at a balmy twenty four. So um, yeah, so you're in a heat wave. I mean, Luke, you really solidified the deal for me that I would never move anywhere north of here, particularly Tennessee. That's just I mean, I love Tennessee. I'm going on vacation there. This spring, but I'm not. I mean, I'm not moving there. It's just not happening. It's not. Well, I'm not going any further north than this. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Nashville. I like Tennessee, but you know, that's yeah. just the end of it for me. And uh, man, we're looking forward to uh, Church Advance Conference coming up like this week. Mm -hmm. uh, I am excited. Uh, yeah, you guys will be getting this on Monday. And uh, the 6th, I think, or 5th of February. And then we're rolling right into the conference this week. Got a ton of that. Just, just got a message on my phone, another pastor coming. We got a lot of great people coming, a lot of great session speakers. You guys get signed up. You, you come right now. We don't have a capacity necessarily. And uh, so if you're you're just on the fence, you want to come enjoy uh, Florida this weekend on Thursday uh, and Friday here at Church Advance 2024 with me, uh, Kurt Skelly, and H.B. Charles. And, and Luke Clayton. Luke Clayton is going to be yeah. on the scene, uh, which and we're going to be doing some podcast recording, man. We're going to be doing some video. And we're going to we're going to have a great time. Lots of great content. And uh, and so, Luke, I'm, I'm excited about that and looking forward to having you down here in just a day or so. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. And, Sooner. It's, it's right around the corner here. It's our it's actually, I did two and two together. Like, that's it. It's it's this week. As it's far as the release of this right episode. Wow. And, and it's um, happening. I love it, man. I'm loving loving what it's. Uh, what it's going to bring and just keep talking to people that are coming. We always have good. We, one of the things I love about church Vance, it's who comes. It's mm -hmm. the kind of people you want to be around. It's the kind of yep. people that are just such shared camaraderie and guys are thinking the same way. Even if they your practice looks a little different yet, yet the thinking is the same way Yep. Uh, yep. and where they want to go. And, and there's a lot of that going on in, in our world today. And that's really what church Vance is all about. So yep. We're excited. And of course, like for right now, we've been in the middle of a discussion, Luke, about uh, uh, the, the things that I'm reflecting on and have grown in and I'm learning. Uh, they, I don't know, things that I've solidified. I've called it reflections of eight years pastoral ministry. I'm in, I'm finishing my eighth year right now at River City, being in one place for eight years, pastoring, leading, transforming. And there's been a whole lot of things I've learned, man. Like, I'm, I'm a different guy now on a lot of levels. Hmm. certainly a different guy when it comes to pastoring and leading people and a lot of that like that's church culture church ministry of people and we you know we so i so i framed 10 of these and we've we've worked through five let me give you a quick recap here uh we, we talk about clear vision uh meaning meaning our our vision for multiplying disciples has to become clear has to be emphasized so on and so forth building a team rather than hiring a team that was a big point something god's really really helped me with number 3 value people People need a pastor. People do not need to be used for the pastor's advantage or the building of the church. 
Um, we talked about slowing down, living for what's uh, right here in front of you now, not next was number five. This idea that live in the moment, um, focus on what's free. And this is what's interesting, Luke. Uh, people would know this, but when we were recording that portion uh, that, that dropped last week, uh, we were I was literally getting texted uh by uh by a by a church member who need absolutely needed me. It was an emergency. And as soon as we got done, I kept I was I was I was recording and texting at the same time. And mm-hmm. I basically said, hang on, I'm almost done. And it's, and I looked at you and said, Man, I'm we had more to record, but I said I gotta drop everything I'm doing. It's like God was like giving me a like, okay, this is what you learned. Yeah. Are you you know, are you in or out? And 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 that that one texting phone call what was brought to my attention has since then consumed uh, hours of, of, of my time mm. and has now become a regular rhythm of uh, counseling and help. Mm. And, and I was just reminded, that's why I'm here. I'm here for what's right in front of me. I'm here for now. I'm here yeah. for the people. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and even though we had a couple more hours to record, it just wasn't going to happen that day. It's not what, mm-hmm. it's not what God, um, had for me. And and there are times where I can break away and do it, but, but at the end of the day, those things matter more. Yeah. And so, you know, where we are, Luke, we're kind of about halfway through this list. Let's, let's keep moving, man. Yeah. Let's keep on going. But yeah, that was a, an excellent uh, time for you to practice what you preach and you did it right <laughs> yeah. there. And you, yeah. we got off the mic, you said, I got to go. And I said, I get it. So yeah. um, here we are back. And uh, yeah, like, like you said, let's dive in on what would be number six. Uh, and that is to embrace simplicity. Yeah. So what I mean by this is it, it's kind of built off of the kind of classic book by Tom Rainer, Simple Church. But that embracing simplicity means that your church does not have to be uh, over complicated. It doesn't have to be over programmed. You're not going to be able to compete or live up to every church's ability, whether it's in your community or those online. And you don't have to be. You don't need to be. Embrace the most simple form of church, whether it's Sunday morning or any regularly scheduled Sunday morning service. I mean, our church is just so simple. It's corporate worship and public proclamation. I mean, our services are about 60 minutes total, and that's all it is. I mean, there's no there's no big choir. There's not, you know, rarely, if ever, quote unquote, special music. Um, there's not. It's just it's just a simple thing. You walk in. We sing a few songs together and we open up the word of God. And I, I, I've just come to really embrace that simplicity. Also simplicity of schedule. We don't have a lot of things during the week. We don't have a heavy schedule. We don't uh, have a ton of outside activities. We try to be really strategic going back to that first point about vision. We try to have everything that we do revolve around that vision. So if it doesn't fit in the vision, it doesn't fit in the calendar. So, I don't want to have this kind of church where people are running ragged nonstop and expecting them to be on your campus four or five times a week involved in something. You got, you know, Bible study Sunday night, visitation on Tuesday, Saturday outreach. And, and then on top of that, you know, Christian schools with games and other things. And I mean, we, we try to sync up everything. So our students and our children meet on the same evening are when there is a children's activity, which is rare, meaning a, an outside of normal kids ministry thing, they always meet on the same time as students do because a lot of parents have elementary kids and high school kids, including myself. So why have a children's activity on Friday night and a youth activity on Saturday night? Your parents are then going to be pulled multiple ways. I think there's a lot of advantages to this. The most, the most, to me, most clear advantage is people get to understand what the real priorities are. So when we do something extra, like a revival meeting or this, as I'm recording this, this coming Friday night, a men's event, we get real good participation because men, I have 50 men right now signed up for our men's stakeout this coming Friday night. That's a big chunk of our men, a lot of our men. I mean, you know, church of a couple hundred, if 150 of them are adults, roughly half and half. It means most of your men are coming to this event. So, um, and I love that. So like if we have a revival meeting, we do ours on Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, we get very good um, attendance because they know that when we're doing something extra, it must, it must be important and it fits in the flow. So we just don't have a lot. We don't have a busy schedule. We don't have a busy Sunday morning schedule. 
and we just keep things simple. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that churches, I know every church I've seemingly, every church I've been involved with, there was just so much going on. Mm-hmm. I heard this statement one time by, I believe it was um, Ray Ortland said that your church should be a place where wom- women with small children can gladly and joyfully follow. Wow. Yeah. Now that is a statement, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when you got young kids and you're running ragged, dragging them all over the place and stuffing them in nurseries, endless hours on end, and there's no time to have regular rhythms and bedtimes and kids are stressed out. They're not eating right. They're not sleeping right. And and, and mom is just being drug all over the place. That's soccer mom stuff. Mm-hmm. That's not church stuff. And uh, again, should we be, be busy for the Lord and be willing to serve? Absolutely. But Luke, one of the things we found here, man, is we have, uh, I think it's like 169 uh, volunteer positions being filled at our church. Over 100 of our adults are enrolled in some ministry of some mm-hmm. kind. About 100 of our adults are in our, our adult Bible fellowships, which is, again, like 70% of our attendance on Sunday morning. Um so, I mean, we have like really good participation and I think part of it is because we've tried to keep it simple. Yeah. So I have a follow-up question to this because um, like you said, in in my experience too, the ministries that I've seen, uh, many of them are, are not simple. Um, mm-hmm. They've got all kinds of programming and, you know, different, uh, you know, fellowships for this and Bible studies for this and activities for this and all these events and uh, so what, 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 if any advice would you maybe give to the pastor, the church leader out there who they've kind of already dug themselves a hole, if you will, and they've got this, they've built this complex schedule and ministry. Uh, what's, what's your advice to those that may say, I need to simplify, you know, I need to, I need to simplify my church. I, I do. I probably do three things. Number one, I would, of course, step one is run all of your programming, all of your budget, and all of your facility usage through the grid of your philosophy and purpose, back to that mission statement. If it's not fitting, you've got to at least put it on, you've at least got to put it in a list of things to bring up for discussion, starting with your leaders. Guys, like this doesn't fit. I mean, I, I can tell you one, we just did the, uh, we, we did a back to school bash for the last three years, giving out backpacks and so on and so forth. It wasn't productive. Vacation Bible school would be a second one. Everybody thinks every church needs to vacation Bible school. Not in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, you got multiple mega churches that that like bring in helicopters and junk for <laughs> um, vacation Bible school. Man, like that's where the kids are going to VBS. And if they do come to your church, it's because the the, the soccer mom during the summer doesn't have anywhere to take her kids, mm-hmm. and they're like VBS bouncing. And we just were like, man, VBS doesn't work for us. It doesn't fit. It's not productive. It's not. So, you know, ultimately it left. And in the back school bash came off the calendar because there's so many, again, so many other people doing it. It, it didn't seem to be making the difference. So I think you just have to honest evaluation, first of all, by, by that. Secondly, I would say I would probably start with my service schedule. Um, and if you're not willing to remove a service from your service schedule, adjust a service in your service schedule. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are like three to thrive, got to have Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I think a lot of people are breaking away from that like that. They, they realize that it's not like the law, that this has to be done this way. And um, yet they're not willing to do it because of the, the, the headache it would create. You know, mm-hmm. like somebody's going to call them a compromiser and God forbid a deacon would disagree with somebody or whatever, whatever the thing is. OK, well, then adjust one. The first change I made at our church, I mean, I've made a lot of changes. The first one I made was I took I took Wednesday night and made it only a prayer meeting. That's it. Mm-hmm. Because you know what I found in a small church like ours when I came? Sunday night and Wednesday night were the exact same people. Yeah. You know, the, the, the Sunday morning crowd, they, they weren't coming to Wednesday. They also weren't coming to Sunday. So the same 20 people. We're coming Sunday night, Wednesday night. So I said, I'm not like, I want to do something for them that's different. So we we cut out the worship element. We cut out really the preaching element. Mm-hmm. And we had a prayer meeting. I thought it was one of the one of the one of the best decisions that we made. So make an adjustment. That takes pressure off of you and it takes pressure off your people. So I would, I would um, you know, I would I would consider that was the second thing I was gonna say. And then um 
Uh, thirdly, I think you have to be pragmatic enough to take away things that don't make sense. And, 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 and you can't, you can't be afraid of what it means for, I mean, there are a lot of people, they just have a program or a something on their calendar or in their budget. And the only reason they do it is because it's sentimentally attached to somebody else. Let me give you one example of that. When I first came, we did a thing called, um, Oh man, I'm going to forget angel tree. Okay. We did a thing when I came called angel tree and angel tree is, is an organization that, that helps churches supply Christmas presents for, uh, incarcerated, the families of incarcerated people, mm -hmm. inmates. Mm -hmm. so, so we had a woman in our church uh, whose husband started this years ago, and he was actually a prison preacher. So I inherited this thing. Well, this is what I found out, Angel Tree. These people milk these churches and organizations. We found out that they go to all these. So you'll use, you know, these people, and I'm, I'm not saying all of them had impure motives, but for the vast majority of part, these people were going to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, church, organization, and signing up for it everywhere. And we knew, mm -hmm. we, we, we could tell, they they would pull up and say, now is this, is this you know, South Point Community Church? No. Oh, oh, what church is this? We just, you know, you could tell by their language, or sometimes mm -hmm. we'd load their trunk only to find we were loading up right beside a whole nother thing of it. Yeah. So yeah. that was one problem. One problem is it would just, and then the second problem, the bigger problem was, there was absolutely no way to connect with these people beyond that because they were coming from anywhere and everywhere. And, and so it was just, it was a defunct, it wasn't working. Now what we do is we do single moms Christmas. We serve 16 families this year in our community connected to our people delivered to their doorstep and gave the gospel to 16 families with Christmas presents. It's the right move. Mm -hmm. Like pragmatically, it didn't make sense to do something that had no bandwidth for retention or discipleship. It was just something that was a uh, tradition that ultimately needed to be broken. And sad to say, um, you know, that lady ended up moving on. And I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that was the sentimental attachment, but it didn't fit mission. So you got to be pragmatic, I think, as well. And you got to be willing to, you know, face whatever it needs that. Or, of course, you just continue on doing what you do and uh and that's it you just do it yeah yeah well something that came to mind too when uh you talk about adjusting i um i, I got a couple of different kind of friends in ministry that are, are in churches like this where they they've got very what we would call complicated complex programming <clears throat> and what they're trying to do you know they're they're kind of the next generation in the church and what they're trying to do in their leadership style as a small tweak because I think a lot of the problem is these complicated churches also come along with, and you have to be at all of this. There's this oh, sense absolutely. of obligation that's pushed. Like you have to be at every service. You have to be at every activity that, that I, I'm seeing the guys in my generation trying to make as far as in their, their messaging and leadership and communication is we offer a lot. You come and enjoy as much of it as you want, take or leave what you want. And it's kind of that mentality of here's what we've got. You know, it's kind of a smorgasbord. It's a spread, but you don't have to eat everything. Um, and I, I mean, I think ultimately, like you said, simplifying overall your programming and your structure is is best. But maybe that's a small shift that someone can make yeah, of saying, you know, you just uh, absolutely, man. You just made me think of another thing we do. I didn't even think about this until you said that. It jarred something with me. When it comes to public announcements or public signups and registrations for events. The only ones we push out to the church at large is those that are relevant to all church. So we don't make youth mm -hmm. ministry announcements, children's ministry announcements, ladies yeah. ministry announcements in church. We let those departments handle those things. And then yeah. one other thing I'd say, because you kind of got me going now, is we also do not try to facilitate the social life of the church. Yeah. We let that happen through connection groups. So mm -hmm. like we're not trying to have a ladies fellowship and a men's fellowship and the men's barbecue and this, we don't do a ton of that. Like this event I'm doing Friday night is a kickoff event for a prayer meeting and a Bible study for men that starts in February. And so, so there's a purpose to it, but we don't, we don't make that a big deal. So in other words, I'm not going to get up and say, don't forget this Friday, we got a men's prayer breakfast 
Well, that's not relevant to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that feeds what you're talking about. You know, we we don't expect everybody to be there. In fact, we don't even say anything for them to uh, to be there, et cetera. I think I think that that is how we would approach that. Yeah. Yeah. And a good rule of thumb when you're doing announcements in public announcements, like you said, is if it does not truly apply to the majority of the church, as in 51 percent or more, you don't say anything. Absolutely. Um, so a men's event. Yes. A women's event. Yes. Because obviously that's a 50 50 scenario in most cases. Uh, yeah. But yes, you know, the the senior, you know, senior saints group and, you know, youth group and all of that. The, let the let those groups announce it to, amongst themselves. Yes. Um, so embrace that simplicity. Let's move on to number seven here. Uh, and let's talk about clear communication. Yes, boy, I feel like we're just now starting to get a hold of this, but harness the tools that you have. For us, it's Planning Center, the Church Center app, where we can push out notifications, communications, weekly updates. I love that. I do, a, I do what's called a halftime email to our church every Wednesday. Mm -hmm really, really goes well. It's a just, I review the sermon. I put a link to the sermon. If you missed it, I give a preview for the upcoming sermon. We share our prayer requests. We do our like things you can register and sign up for and announcements. And it's real simple. It's not like a big, long 10 page thing. I think that is super, super, super helpful. Guys, obviously I mean, you sh surely you're on some kind of uh, church management software. I love planning center. I know many, many other people that use it and you may use something different, but when you connect, when you harness that with the church center app and my wife has done a great job of taking the church center app that we use here at river city and, and, and making it more personalized, did some great work with graphics. Uh, it's, it's your, it's your hub, man. It's where you connect with your groups. It's where you connect with your students everything. You can sign up for your events through it. We just, I mean, when we are just like big on it, we constantly push our church to have it. And then of course we use mass texting. Um, and we are, we have a system like if an event, we, we, you know, when we start our preparation for the event, we run all of our events, like on an eight week kind of cycle of preparation and communication. And the closer you get to the event, the more direct communication you have. Um, we have even lobby posters, that where you can sign up for events. I love that idea. Um, and I'll show you guys that to come to the conference, or maybe I can even share a picture, but I got that idea from a friend of mine in Milton, Florida, that, you know, there's a section, you know, you know, when you go into the movies, I know most, many guys don't, cause you know, they got conviction against it. Um, but when you go into the movies and you're walking down the hallway and there's all those posters that are saying mm -hmm. these movies are coming up, that was kind of the inspiration for the posters in our hallway and in our lobby at our church. And it's yeah. the next like four. There's always three or four things coming. So we've always got posters with QR codes and links and sign it up. And then, like you said, only the things that are for everybody and the things that are for uh, all church are the things that actually make pulpit announcements. Yeah. Uh, we also keep a revolving slide presentation at the beginning of every service and in our lobby. Um, that that are again, things that are kind of coming. So I think, you know, you gotta, you gotta be out there ahead of it and uh, clear communication. And then, I mean, man, that, you know, that, that then trickles down to communication with your team. As you guys know, I've got a large um, group of volunteers that serve with us. And so, you know, we, we have to really communicate with laymen that are basically our staff. And I mean, man, it just, it just continually that, that clear communication raising expectation, raising accountability, having channels of communication open and making sure you are saying what needs to be said and they are hearing what needs to be heard is super important uh, for a yep. church ministry, for staff, for uh, dealing with your people and all that, man. Yep. Huge need. I'm going to throw this uh, resource out there uh, since you're talking about Planning Center. A planning Center is a great option. I've worked with a lot of these church management softwares over the years. Planning Center, uh, uh, Subsplash, um, you know, I'm trying to cut church community builder. I've worked with a lot of them, but a lot of these, uh, for smaller churches, I know that a lot of times they're not feasible. A lot of times they do a little bit too much for maybe a, a smaller congregation. And so, um, our friend Ryan Hayden, who we had on the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, here just a few months ago, uh, he's also a web developer on the side and he has created something called congregation hub, uh, congregation I can throw a link in the show notes to that sure. as well. 
Um, he allows uh, your church to try it for like 90 days uh, before you have to pay anything for it. And then once what the cost is, is dirt cheap. I mean, it's incredibly affordable and really it doesn't do all the fancy stuff like the online giving and, you know, maybe more advanced registration for groups and things like that. Um, but it does what it does. It does well. It does simple things like being able to log attendance to events and then also be able to communicate to your church based on groups. So sending out texts to, you know, your, uh, you know, your men's group or your, your teens or, or whatever it may be. Um, and so anyways, that's congregationhub.com. I'm going to throw that out just as a practical resource. Like I said, I'll try to uh, throw a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, but, uh, you know, this is just a, a, one of the many tools uh, that are available out there that you can use for this communication uh, through, you know, text. Because I will say that it's amazing to me how many churches still, you know, they do rely solely almost on pulpit announcements for their communication. Oh, wow. And it's like, look, y'all, like, first of all, um, there's, there's a lot of people that just aren't going to be be there every single service. So they're going to miss it. Uh, and, you know, even if they're there, they're, you'll be surprised how many people are just they're t- They don't even realize, but they're subconsciously t- uh, just tuning you out because they oh, yeah. hear these announcements every week. But you send them a text, you send them an email. Uh, and they do pay attention. My homiletic students now, my current ones, they'll know uh, that, I mean, you talk about this pet peeve of mine is even congregational announcements in the middle of a worship service. I just cannot handle it. You get a guy that stops all the singing, all the choir before the preaching gets up and reads the bulletin. That is terrible. And it's definitely, and and, you know, pinning up a a, a sign up sheet on the bulletin board is probably not going to get it either. I'll tell you one thing I also would say about clear communication that I think a lot of younger people miss. They tend to think that you send an email and that's sufficient. You still cannot beat um, direct communication mm-hmm. when it comes to expectations. Uh, you know, texting's more, better than emailing, phone calling somebody is better than texting. Mm-hmm. As far as like, if you really need to get a message to somebody, yeah. And uh, you know, there's some of those principles as well. But man, communicate, 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 yeah. over communicate, yep. and um, and build a culture of it. And uh, I found this too, guys. One thing I've learned about preaching and just ministry in general, pastors bathe in this stuff, like literally swim around in it. You swim around in your sermon. Your life is the church. Your everything you think about, you know, related to your business, your work is church. Well, that's not that's not the way everybody in your church is. I mean, they come to church on Sunday. They love their church. They're part of their church, but they don't live with it. They don't carry it. And so what do you have to do? You have to communicate it. You have to you have to get the burden out there. Put it in front of them. Give them clear clear points. And you know, it's interesting. Look, I sent you this video. I won't, I won't say much about it, but I sent you this video of of an organization that we're both we're both friend, uh, friendly with and 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 hoping to help in some areas. But I showed you one of the uh, uh, updated promotional video, and the thing that just absolutely frustrated the fire out of me about that video is there was no action. There was yeah. nothing you couldn't watch that video and do anything with it. And I thought, honestly, it's a worthless video because, yeah. you know, if you're trying to stir people, if you're trying to get people to sign up for something, support something, engage in something, get involved in something, you're, you got to be clear in what you're, mm-hmm. what you're telling people to do. And there's so much this overlaps with preaching as well that you've got to clearly communicate what you're trying to say and what you're trying to get to people to do with what you have said. And I mean, man, John, John Maxwell's got two books on communication that I, excuse me, I think are excellent and everyone communicates if you connect. And I think, I think the other one's about 21, 21 laws of communication or something like that. Excellent books uh, on the subject and, and just generally speak church calm overall is just one of those subjects as you get into a church you realize this is critical and you got to do it well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you said, communication, it, it's key. Uh, and all, and I like how you said that about, you know, almost being more personal, uh, even with like sending personal texts, making personal phone calls, you know, cause there, there is this temptation just to like automate everything. And I do love automated communication. I think there's a place for it and for process, but uh, I heard it said one time, uh, when it comes to church, especially build personal into your so that part of that process, you might have some automated text, automated emails, but part of that is going to be a personal text message, a personal phone call, a personal note, whatever it may be. Um, all that 
to communicate clearly. Well, I think that's a good place for us to kind of uh, pause for now. We're going to pick up next time with Stay Teachable. Uh, and so that's kind of a, a teaser for the next episode. But uh, yeah, like we said, we'll we're, we're hope to see uh, many of you at Church Advance here in just a few days. It'll be great, um, man. And, Can't wait. Uh, and, and, and by the way, I will throw this out. Normally, this would be the week that we drop uh, the whetstone uh, preaching content as far as our, our series of first first Monday of the month. Uh, however, uh, because of the uh, the church advance and all that coming up, we're going to have so much content with H.B. Uh, Charles, Kurt Skelly, uh, that we're going to for that. So don't worry, it's coming. Yep. Uh, I just wanted to throw it out there. We just wanted to kind of finish this series out, and then you're going to get kind of an overload of uh, of preaching content uh, here in the coming weeks and months as we replay some of that from Church Advance. So uh, don't worry, that content's coming. I just wanted to make a programming note for those out there. Awesome, guys. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. All right. See ya. Thanks again for joining us for this episode. And we really would appreciate it if you could leave us that five-star review. And then, of course, share this content with your friends. We want to help as many pastors and church leaders as we can. And be sure to, of course, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you may listen to podcasts. And go ahead and subscribe to the Church Advance YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at Church Advance. This podcast is hosted by Brian Sams. It is co-hosted and produced by myself, Luke Clayton, and the team at mustincrease.com. If you want to connect with Brian, be sure to head over to his website at briansams.com. Well, we really look forward to seeing you again in the next episode as we continue to advance a reformation of fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches right here on Church Advance with Brian Sams.